Now that we have a definition of stress pointwise on a section cut, I'd like to look at the precise relationship between stresses and the overall resultant force and resultant moment acting across a section cut. So let's go ahead and consider a body and a section cut passing through that body whose normal is in the y direction. And let's go ahead and look at, say, the bottom piece and consider that we have this section cut here and we'd like to go ahead and understand the relationship between the stresses on this section cut, which will be a normal stress in the y direction, a shear stress in the x direction, and a shear stress in the z direction. We'd like to understand the relationship between those three stresses and the force and the moment acting across that section cut. So first of all, if we want to know the force in the y direction, what we need to do is consider every little bit of area on this section cut, so we can call that dA, and acting on that little bit of dA, there is going to be a stress, let's say sigma yy, so normal stress in the y direction. So if I multiply sigma yy by dA, I'll get a bit of force acting in the y direction. Now if I add up all over the entire section cut, I'll get the total force Fy. And if I want the total force in the x direction, I can look at sigma xy, so the y face, x direction forces, multiplied by dA gives me a force on a little bit of area. And now I can add up, and that will then give me Fx. So this is the connection basically between stresses and total forces across a section cut. Uh, we can also do moments, for instance. The moment about the z-axis that I get on this section cut is given to me by x sigma y dA. And the way this comes about is we can think of, look at a little bit of area acting across the section cut. There are three forces acting on this area. There's the y force, there's the x force, and then there's the z force. And if I'm thinking about the z axis here, the only contribution to moments about the z-axis are going to come from the force sigma yy dA and the lever arm to that little patch area relative to the z-axis is x. So we have x is the lever arm times the force sigma yy dA and that gives me the moment for associated with that little patch of material and now I add up over the whole section cut so integrate with respect to A and that will give me the z component of the moment. So this gives me the connection between forces and moments on a section cut to the stresses on that section cut. So the forces per unit area, point by point. Uh, in general, the relationship looks as follows. So if I want to know what the total force as a vector is acting on the section cut, uh, it's sigma transpose n, so n is the normal to the section cut, and then integrate over that area. And the moments are sigma transpose n dA, cross product with the position vector to the reference point will give me the resultant moment on the section cut. Uh, in both of these expressions I have this combination of terms sigma transpose n and we typically say that's equal to t and t is known as the traction vector uh, acting on the section cut and the traction vector is nothing else than the force per unit area the vector vector force per unit area acting point by point on a section cut. And this relationship here, sigma transpose n equals t, is known as Cauchy's law. Uh, I'll just sketch out the proof of this law. It's an important relationship to know. And it, the proof goes somewhat as, as follows. So if, if you consider a body uh, and then look at a point in that body and cut out a little triangular bit of material near that point. So we'll just do this in 2D. And so the edge lengths of the triangle are delta x, delta y, and the face of the triangle has a normal n, okay? And so, and you can define n in terms of delta x and delta y. So in fact, so let's now look at this little triangle of material here and consider the forces that are acting on it. There are the body forces here that can act on it, so those would be bx and by times the area of the triangle. Uh, on the bottom face, the force is going to be minus sigma yy ey minus sigma yx ex. That delta x, that gives me a force. So I have a, and let's assume that's a unit thickness since we're just doing this as 2D. The force on the left plane over here is going to be minus sigma xx ex 
and minus sigma x, y, e, y times delta y. So delta y is the length over here. This is the force per unit area length. And then you can think of multiplying these by one for unit thickness. And then on this surface over here, let's just say there's a force per unit area and we'll just represent arbitrarily it by its traction vector components, tx and ty, in the x and the y directions. And then we multiply by the length of that edge, which is the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared, and then say multiply by one for the thickness. Now what I can do is simply sum the forces in the x and the y directions on this triangle, and then divide by the area of the triangle and take the limit as delta x and delta y go to zero, and that will actually generate for me, if I unravel the final expression, it will generate this expression which is known as Cauchy's law. So that's, that's kind of a quick sketch of the proof of Cauchy's law. Uh, let's just look at a, a simple example of applying Cauchy's law. So suppose I have a bar and it's subjected to a load P in the X direction uh, on the left and the right. The state of stress actually at every point in the body you can show that it's equal to P over A, zero, zero, zero. So sigma XX is P over A, sigma YY is zero, zero, and sigma XY and sigma YX are also zero. Uh, point by point in the body. So any point that I pick, it could be this point or this point, they, they will all have the same uh, state of stress represented relative to the x and the y axes. Um, so let's consider a section cut uh, whose normal is EX passing through some location along the length of the bar. And let's have a look at what Cauchy's law tells us. So if I look at Cauchy's law applied to this, I'm going to multiply the stress by the normal vector to the section cut, so that's 1, 0. Normal vectors are unit here, and I'm going to get P over A. And what this tells me is that the traction on this section cut has an X component, P over A, and there is no shear component, the shear is 0. So, so pictorially I have just simply a set of forces distributed uniformly across the section cut, all acting with magnitude P over A in the X direction. Uh, if we want, we could consider, say, a, a second section cut. Suppose we have one who, whose angle with respect to the horizontal here is theta, or the normal vector's angle with respect to the horizontal is theta. So the normal vector is cosine theta ex plus sine theta ey. And if I apply Cauchy's law to this section cut, I find a traction vector whose first component is p over a times cosine theta and zero. So pictorially what that means is on this section cut here, there is a force per unit area which has a constant value in the x direction of p over a cosine theta, and then there is no component uh, in the y direction. Now if I want to know what the normal stress on this section cut is, I'm going to have to dot this traction vector, say, with the normal vector of the actual section cut. So the section cut normal is pointing in this direction here, and, the exp and that, that was cosine theta sine theta. And so if I do that dot product with the traction vector, then I'll get p over a cosine squared theta for the normal stress. If I want the shear stress on this section cut, well, I need to find the expression for the tangent vector to the section cut, and then I can calculate the tangent uh, stress to that section cut.